Hey everyone, I'm back with another out of the park tutorial. Uh, this one is, well there, um, screen. <laughs> I guess maybe I should just go full screen before I hit record, but I never do. Oh well. Um, so this is going to be a video that will kind of uh, accompany some other videos I've done on like off-season planning. Like I mentioned in the off-season planning video that one thing you want to do is designate players for assignment who you're going to uh, not ha have on your 40 man next season before free agency begins. Because at that point, if they're on an auto renewal contract, uh, their contract is guaranteed at that point. So same with arbitration. Once they have that arbitration um, decision, the contract's guaranteed. So if you designate them for assignment before that, they're off your books for the next year. But another thing you want to consider with players like that is trading them, obviously. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go over a player here who he had too much value for me to designate for assignment. Um, but because he was just a bullpen piece for me and out of options, he was very replaceable for me. You know, I think bullpen guys in general are just like in major leagues are pretty replaceable, except for maybe your really high end guys. And so if you have relievers with trade value, I'd consider seeing what you can get for them, especially uh, when they're out of minor league options, because other than the guys at my back back into my bullpen, I like to have guys with minor league options available in case they're having a bad year or in case I need fresh arms from the bullpen. So this is Brady Corrigan. And as you can see, he's got some some pretty good uh, ratings here, but we'll get into that. So he uh, is 31 years old. He was out of minor league options. You see his last option was used last year and I used it only make him 1.8 million. And this was a guy who'd been with me forever. I started this him obviously in 2020, and I drafted him in the 20th round of the 2021 draft. He ended up developing into a pretty good player, even made the all-star team in 2026 for me. Never was able to crack my rotation because this below average movement in a park like Camden Yards with the combination of being a fly ball pitcher just was, was, was not a good thing. And so he had a down year for me. Uh, you can see, let me go ahead to just his major league stats. You can see he's kind of like every other year, you know, he was fine. And then he had an awesome year and then down year and then a really good year and then a down year. And so like, he's just a replaceable bullpen arm. Really? Like I said, I didn't trust him enough given his batted ball profile and movement ratings to make, put him in the starting rotation, even though you can see the Braves are planning to use him as a starter and he's got really good stuff. Uh, a couple awesome pitches, all really good pitches, above average control. So the Braves were obviously going to value him much higher than I was going to value him. You know, 45 is almost league average. And a league average pitcher is, uh, starting pitcher, is more valuable than league average players at a lot of other positions. There's a, definitely a premium put on starters um, in the real majors, just like there is an out of the park. So... I knew that Corrigan was a dude that I didn't have much. I, I had a lot of guys like him. I had a lot of guys who could pitch in middle relief for me and potentially have a great year or potentially be bad. And he didn't have options. And so I put him on the trading. Well, no, I didn't put him on the trading block. I shopped him around. And in doing so, uh, I was able to get some young players for him. So from the Braves, I was able to get this guy, Steve Martin, who... Where did they draft him? He was a second round pick just a couple of years ago. And I do have, you know, this is, I mean, it's a really good trade, but it's because they viewed Corrigan as a starting pitcher in their rotation. That's why they were able to, willing to give this up. And this is a guy who they viewed as a reliever. They had him simply in relief and once he got to double A. They didn't see him as a starter in the major leagues. So, of course they were willing to deal a minor league relief prospect for a major league starting pitcher. And there was one other guy in the deal, but that's why they were willing to go up a second round pick. I guess in the two years, they just kind of soured on him as a potential starter and didn't want to do it. I am probably going to force use him as, uh, as a starting pitcher and see what happens. Uh, even though he did put up 2.1 war as a reliever last year in double A, but he's, he's almost 26. He's going to be 26 when the season starts. So, uh, he's getting up there in terms of prospect age, but um, I thought that was oh, an arm worth taking a chance on, especially he didn't need to be added to the 40-man yet. He'll have three option years, and I think he'll be just as effective as Corrigan if he does pitch in my bullpen one day. 
And then I got this guy, Jerry Glidden, uh, similar uh, in that he was a second round. He was also a second round pick. And this is another guy who the who is just a bullpen piece because of his stamina. And so let me see if he was ever thought to really be a starter. So he was a starter. He was drafted as a starting pitching prospect, you can see here. So these are two guys that the Braves drafted. They were in their system, and they're just relief pitcher prospects now. I think this guy could be a league average reliever, kind of like a fringe uh, middle relief guy who's up and down, providing fresh arm when I need it. There's some value in having guys like that that you want them to be adequate players. And so that's why I pulled the trigger on this. And obviously they had soured on the other guy as a starter. So in the Braves' eyes, they're giving up two minor league relief pitch prospects for a major league starter. Again, that's a good deal for them. In my eyes, I got a guy who might be a starter and another reliever. Neither of them had to go on the 40-man this year. And they'll both have three minor league options. When you're a small market team like the Orioles, although I'm not a whole terribly small market anymore as my budget has increased you you know you need to kind of do that roster churn and replace guys at the fringe like corrigan instead of a guy making 1.3 million i can replace him with a guy making you know 560 whatever thousand the minimum is and i save i save anywhere from half a million to a million dollars and if you do that on multiple players on your roster it starts to starts to add up oh this guy also tours rotator cuff at one point so yeah the braves appeared to be done with him so just to make sure, I probably should have said this at the beginning, just make sure you know the type of player that I'm p talking about. What you want to look at is, let's go ahead and look here in terms of the options. And we're going to go here to contract and minor league option years. I've done other videos on that if you need a more, called roster rules, if you need more in-depth of how the options work. But you want to keep an eye on this as the offseason begins. Who's out of options? Uh, if a guy is out of options, is he a player that will definitely be in your uh, on your major league team for the entire year, or is he a guy who you need the flexibility to send up and down when you need injury replacements, or when you need a fresh arm in your bullpen, or things like that? If he's a guy battling for a spot on the fringe of your twenty-six man roster and he's out of options, I would recommend doing what I did with Corgan, or recommend doing what I did with a bunch of other players, and that is designate them for assignment because then they're off the books. And it'll just give you more financial flexibility moving into the season. It will give you more roster flexibility during the season. So what I do when I when I start my off season, and I and I went over this a little bit in my off season video, but I go I go to my roster and I just go to the contract and got option years, cool. And I I honestly just flip through every dude like this, and I look at this option league option year thing here, and uh, I. I I, I write down every player on my 40 man and I have almost like, it's not on a whiteboard, it's in a notebook, but my whole roster drawn out. And then I kind of have a line and then like the fringe guys below it. And if, if you're below the line as a fringe guy and you have zero options left, you're either getting cut or traded that off season. Cause I just, I don't have the patience. I, it's not that I don't have the patience. I just think it's bad roster strategy to have fringe guys who you have to keep on your major league roster because they don't have options. So get rid of those guys. Get rid of Brady Corrigan by trading him. Um, I also, you know, I DFA, I some decent players this season just because, like, uh, there was no. Uh, that's too common of a name. Hold on, let me find him. Uh, there's two. They're just too replaceable. Like this guy was. I mean, he's kind of gone downhill. He's only a forty player. Um, now, but he made the all-star team in 2025 for me. I drafted him in the third round of 2020. His name is Reese Albert. And we just go with his major league. You can see he was decent fourth outfielder for me. This year he really wasn't because I had so much outfield depth come up that he was down the minors all the year. But he's a fourth out fourth or fifth outfielder for me. And the reason why he's so clutch at that is because he could play all three outfield positions, which, you know, I just have to have uh out of out of my bench outfielders but uh he was making 1.5 million you can see he was out of option years and so i'm going to give that job to a guy making <laughs> like i think his arbitration estimate was like 1.5 million so i'm going to give his job to a guy who one has minor league options and two makes a million dollars less boom and so that's the example of a guy that i just cut and could he play on a major league roster next year yeah absolutely but is he replaceable with any basic 
outfielder at AAA, hopefully, in your system. Yeah, totally. So that's just a thing to keep in mind when you're doing that roster churn. When you're DFAing guys uh, before free agency begins who aren't going to be on your team next year, identify guys like I did with Brady Corrigan and see if they have any trade value because you're not going to get back amazing, amazing prospects, but you can get back useful pieces for your team. Cool. Talk to you next time.